Hello, and welcome back to Wrong Mar, and welcome back to another book talk. In today's lesson, we're going to be taking a look at the book The Island by Armin Greeder. This book is packed with powerful pictures and some really, really interesting themes and topics. But first, let's remind ourselves what book talk is. So you might remember from the last two book talks that in book talk we take a picture book and we read through it before we think of a few questions to discuss from the story. Remember, these picture books are not like the Hungry Hungry Caterpillar. Often the pictures tell a huge part of the story and the questions that come up are deep philosophical questions. Our book for today's lesson is The Island by Armin Greeder, and this is the front cover. So like always, let's start off by completing an OWI chart on the cover of the book. Remember, the O stands for what I observe. That's what you can see on the front cover of the book for sure. The W stands for I wonder. What questions pop into your head as you look at this front cover? And the I stands for I infer because. What do you think will happen based on the clues you found on the cover of the story? Pause the video and complete your own OWI chart for this book. How did you get on with that? The observe was actually quite difficult this time because there's not much to observe on this book. I said that I can see some tall walls with towers on the top of them and that there are some windows there too. But other than that, we can't really see much at all on this cover. My wonder questions though, there were plenty of them. Here's three that I thought of. I wonder what this place is. I wonder why they have to build such tall walls. And I wonder why the book is called The Island. And finally, for the I infer, I inferred something from this picture on the cover. I said that I think the island is a prison because the tall walls and towers could be used to keep the prisoners in. What do you think? Did you infer something different? Now that our OWI chart is complete, we are ready to jump into the story. So without further ado, let's get into the book. The Island by Armin Greeder One morning the people of the island found a man on the beach where faith and ocean currents had washed his raft ashore. When he saw them coming, he stood up. He wasn't like them. The people stared at him. They were puzzled. Why had he come here? What did he want? What should they do? One of them suggested it would be best to put the man straight back on his raft and send him away without delay. I am sure he wouldn't like it here, so far away from his own kind. But the fisherman knew the sea. If we send him back it will be the death of him, and I don't want that on my conscience, he said. We have to take him in. So they took him in. They took him to the uninhabited part of the island, to a goat pen that had been empty for a long time. They made him understand that he was to stay there and showed him where he could sleep on some straw. And then they locked the gate and went back to their business and life on the island returned to what it had always been. 
Then, one morning, the man appeared in town. This caused a commotion. The people grabbed him roughly and screamed at him. He tried to make them understand that he was hungry, that he hadn't eaten for days, and could they not give him something to eat? He's right, said the fisherman. We can't ignore him now that he's among us. We must help him. This frightened the people. But we can't just feed anyone who comes our way, argued the grocer. We don't have enough for everyone. We will all starve to death. The fisherman suggested that someone should give him a job so that he could earn his keep. And, he added quietly, he would probably work for less pay than one of us. The innkeeper could surely use some help in the kitchen. If he was in my kitchen, nobody would want to eat at my inn, muttered the innkeeper. Hire him yourself. But there was only room for one on the fisherman's boat. The carpenter remembered the man's poorly crafted raft. He evidently had no idea how to use a hammer or a saw. The carter said simply, Look at him! I need someone who can carry heavy loads! And the priest was very sorry, but the stranger's voice would clash with the rest of the choir. In that case, we will have to look after him together, said the fisherman. We took him in, we can't turn our backs, even though he's not one of us, he's still our responsibility. In the end, the innkeeper agreed to let the man have the scraps he would have otherwise tossed to the pigs and they took him back to the goat pen. They strengthened the gate and took turns to guard him so that in future he would not disturb them. But despite this, the man's presence continued to trouble the people. They hadn't asked for him, but he was here. Their act of kindness had not been the end, merely a beginning. They had taken him onto their island and now he was part of their lives. He haunted their days and often their dreams. Men frowned and muttered under their breaths. Women stayed in their kitchens and mothers warned their children not to go near the goat pen. The school teacher lectured about savages and their strange ways. He eats with his hands, said the innkeeper, and he eats the bones. He will come and eat you if you don't finish your soup, a mother warned her child. The children are scared of him, lamented the school teacher that night at the inn. I am sure he would murder us all if he could, said the policeman. Foreigner spreads fear in town, said the newspaper in big black letters. The people grew restless. Fear spread throughout the island. People began to talk. We have to do something before it's too late. We've enough troubles as it is. He's not one of us. He's not our problem. He's a stranger. He doesn't belong. He has to go. And so they went to the goat pen. Seized the man marched him to his raft and pushed him out to sea. And then they set fire to the fisherman's boat because he had made them help the man. Some people agreed with the fisherman, but the others were louder. They never again wanted to eat fish from this sea that had brought them the stranger and they built a great wall all around the island with watchtowers from which they could search the sea for signs of rafts and shoot down passing seagulls and cormorants so that no one would ever find their island again. Oh, so quite a different story this week than we've looked at the previous two weeks. This story is much, much darker with 
deeper questions to be unpacked. I'm sure lots of questions popped into your head as you were reading that story. Here's a few questions that I thought of that we can discuss today. My first question, a question I asked myself multiple times when I was reading this story, and that was, why do you think the islanders were so afraid of the stranger when he actually did nothing to them? Pause the video and write down your opinion on this question. Second question is a little bit more challenging. I was wondering, do you think there was anything the islanders were correct about? Or was there anything they said or did that you actually agreed with? Pause the video and write down your answer to this question. And my third and final question brings this story a little bit to life. When I saw the cover and I read the book, I couldn't help but think about a big wall that somebody said they were going to be building in America. So my third question is, do you think strangers coming to Ireland could face any of the problems the stranger did? Pause the video and write down your answers to this question. Well, I am very much looking forward to hearing your opinions about this very interesting and disturbing story. I also can't wait to hear what wonder questions you came up with. That's all we have time for today. Until next time, take care.